and we're beginning lecture nine right here. We're back then to looking at figure 2016 on page 782. We ended up last time talking about the fact that the plasma colloid osmotic pressure shown in figure 2016 involves the fluid in the glomerulus, involves the blood plasma becoming hypertonic compared to the fluid surrounding the glomerulus, compared to that tissue fluid surrounding the glomerulus. Recall then that when we have two fluids, one of which is hypertonic, to the other. The other, of course, then is hypotonic. Recall that the movement of fluid is from the hypotonic to the hypertonic solution. And now, looking at the figure again, we're saying that because of this hypertonic, hypotonic situation, fluid is moving from the tissue fluid surrounding the glomerulus, it's moving into the glomerulus, and note the direction of the arrow indicating that. Let's move next on the figure to the arrow indicating capsular hydrostatic pressure. Capsular referring to the, glomeri the glomerular capsule. So this is where fluid is accumulating. Hydrostatic pressure just referring to the fluid. And you can picture then the fact that by this point, fluid from the glomerulus has been filtered into the surrounding space. And in turn, fluid pressure is building up in that surrounding space, in that space surrounding the glomerulus. Note the direction again of the arrow for capsular hydrostatic pressure, and it's simply indicating that as this fluid builds up surrounding the glomerulus, The resulting pressure increase pushes some of it back into the glomerulus. So again, capsular hydrostatic pressure, fluid has been filtered into the capsule, into the fluid in the capsule, and that buildup of fluid then, and that increase in pressure due to this buildup of fluid is causing some of the fluid to be pushed back into the glomerulus. And let's go now to your lecture outline for a moment. And we're to the formula for net filtration pressure. Notice, by the way, this same formula is on page 782 in the left-hand column, bolded just above the figure. So net filtration pressure equals three different things. First of all, the force favoring filtration. And again, this is, as we've talked about now, glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure. minus 
two forces that oppose filtration, two forces that move fluid back into the glomerulus. And as we've talked about then, these two forces are capsular hydrostatic pressure and glomerular capillary osmotic pressure. And if we finish this part of the discussion up by going back to the figure, figure 2016, notice what we end up with as a result of these three different factors is a net filtration pressure. Find this arrow then to the right part of the diagram, this net filtration pressure. And what we're saying here that as a result of these other three factors, as a result of glomerular hydrostatic pressure and plasma colloid osmotic pressure and capsular hydrostatic pressure, as a result of this one force favoring filtration and two forces opposing filtration, the net result is typically a positive net filtration pressure. Notice then the arrow indicating that at the end of this entire process, we are filtering some material, some net filtration of material is occurring out of the glomerulus. And you don't have to worry about the numbers down below. It just provides an example if you'd like to take a look at that. Let's move back to our handout then. And we're to the point of filling in some blanks. And again, the blanks are filled in for you. And so looking at filtration pressure. So as in other capillaries, the main force that moves substances by filtration through the glomerular capillary wall is the hydrostatic pressure of the blood inside. So we've talked about this now. Let's refer now, and we're back to figure 20, 16. Let's refer back to that figure and now go up to the upper left hand corner where we're seeing an entire glomerulus surrounded by a capsule. Take just a minute and these are not labeled for you but identify now the afferent arteriole which is bringing blood into the glomerulus remember and then the efferent arteriole which is carrying blood away from the glomerulus. And now back to our handout and we're to the point where it's saying blood backs up and blood pressure increases in the glomerulus because the afferent arteriole, the one to the left on that diagram, the one that shows an arrow indicating blood coming in. So the afferent arteriole has a larger diameter than the efferent arteriole, has a larger diameter than does the one shown in the upper right with the arrow indicating blood moving out. And if you look closely at the diagram, you can see they are showing that the afferent arteriole is somewhat larger in diameter than the efferent arteriole. So back to your handout, because of this, because of this difference in diameters of these two arterioles, and so some filtrate then moves back into the venule or the distal end of the glomerulus basically just the area close to the afferent, I'm sorry, close to the afferent arteriole. So again, fluid then moving back into the um, end of the glomerulus closest to the afferent arteriole, upper right again on your diagram, and the blood moves back into this end of the glomerulus due to the 
colloid osmotic pressure caused by the retained proteins caused by the blood in the glomerulus becoming hypertonic, as we said, to the surrounding filtrate. And back to your handout then, any increase in glomerular hydrostatic pressure due to buildup in the filtrate in the capsule also decreases filtration. And so let's think about that one for a minute. What might cause filtrate to build up to accumulate in the capsule, to not drain normally from the capsule. And so here, picture a patient with a kidney stone somewhere down along the line in a ureter in one of those tubes leading away from the kidney and down to the urinary bladder. And again, picture now that kidney stone blocking the flow of urine and picture urine then backing up along the ureter and all the way into the capsule. And so this then again would cause, back to your handout, uh, one of those um, buildups of filtrate, which would decrease filtration. As that capsule fills with liquid, it becomes harder and harder for blood pressure in the glomerulus to push even more liquid out into that surrounding space. Let's go down also now and talk about filtration rate. So back to your handout and again some things that are filled in for you. And so notice then the glomerular filtration rate and we're uh, abbreviating this just as GFR, is directly proportional to the net filtration pressure. And so another way of saying this, the higher the net filtration rate, the higher the GFR. Back to your handout then, the concentrations of certain components in the blood plasma can be used to evaluate kidney functions. For example, if the GFR is too low, the plasma concentrations of urea, which is a waste product containing nitrogen, and of creatinine, and just a reminder in parentheses what creatinine is, uh, the, uh, the concentration of these substances may increase in the blood to well above normal levels. So let's stop here as far as lecture 9 goes and we'll come back and talk a bit more about this in lecture 10.